welcome to the essence of knowledge meeting today we are going to conduct the test of suraj so these are your questions take your time all the best ah uh, okay i would like to start my answers uh, question number 1 what are the basic requirements for gaining knowledge well uh from my point of view i think the uh, basic requirement for gaining knowledge is uh should be basically the intense desire for knowledge and intense desire for uh, liberation and uh, basically all the qualities of the seeker uh, should be there in order to gain uh, the knowledge in the path of knowledge and uh, some of the uh, some of the uh, qualities like intense desire for knowledge and intense desire for liberation and uh, the respect for teachers uh, the commitment and all these are Uh, the inherent uh, qualities that are very crucial uh, for gaining knowledge and apart from these uh, other qualities can be uh, cultivated similarly uh, um, the proper means of knowledge uh, are required uh, for example in the path of knowledge we have uh, uh, we have accepted uh, the direct experience and logic as the valid means of knowledge and uh, in the same way Uh, uh there should be the uh, proper criteria for truth uh through which uh, we can get or we can classify the uh, truth and false experiences and i think that is the way or uh, that are the requirements for gaining the knowledge in the path of knowledge however uh, it is actually not the process of gaining actually it is whatever we get in the path of knowledge is the subtracted knowledge and that uh, is only the destruction of uh, our blind beliefs assumptions and indoctrinations question number 2 if truth is one and never changes how can it be subjective and arbitrary well uh, if i have to explain uh, sorry define truth uh, truth is the categorization of the experiences and uh, and uh, uh, truth is determined uh, based on the predetermined criteria and criteria are always subjective and arbitrary therefore truth is also subjective and arbitrary uh, and uh, it uh, differs from one person to another person and uh, if we if we talk about the truth in the relative sense it is very loose and uh, it changes very frequently uh, but on the path of knowledge we have adopted very strict criteria of truth that is uh, whatever changes is the false and the the ever unchanging is the truth therefore um, yes yes the truth is subjective and arbitrary however uh, the truth on the path of knowledge uh, as per our criteria that which is uh, ever unchanging is only the truth and uh, uh, therefore uh, the truth comes out to be the the true nature the experiencer is the truth and uh, that is only one in its category and it is uh, never uh, it is uh, never uh, it is uh, ne- it never changes question number 3 why is existence regarded as whole and complete well existence is all that is uh, it includes everything that is perceived that is unperceived that is in the past present and future and it includes uh, that is perceived uh, that is imagined that all which is unimagined this universe and all the universes uh, it includes truth as well as it includes false it includes the experience as well as experiencer therefore the existence is whole and complete the existence is there as the eternal pure presence and it is always in the state of oneness and it is whole and complete because uh, the existence is uh, also non local non procedural non temporal and uh, it is empty and there is no any uh, possibility of anything being outside the existence because nobody has this uh, experience and logically also if we if somebody claims that something is seen outside the existence then that will just be an assumption because uh, that which is seen is will be the experience and the, there uh, there should be someone 
who is witnessing uh, something being outside the existence and that will be the experience and the experiencer which is uh, by definition already inside the existence yes uh, and therefore we can prove that everything is included inside or within the existence therefore uh, it is regarded as whole and complete question number four what causes a witnessing ability in the existence well uh experiencer is that uh, which which witnesses the changing experiences and uh, in the existence and uh, the existence has actually the two faces is its two sides that is the experience and the experiencer and uh, however in the existence in the state of non-dual uh, there is no exact separation between the experience and the experiencer uh, they are merged together therefore nothing causes the witnessing existence witnessing ability in the existence it is its uh, inherent quality of the existence that it is witnessing itself as the illusory experiences was number five if the experiencer is emptiness how can it pervade in every creature well i'll come to this question uh, later question number six if experiences are infinite why is the experiencer getting a limited experience yes it is uh, true that experiences are infinite and uh, and uh, the experiencer is uh, getting the limited experience well i think actually this is uh not true because the experience is the experiencer is also getting the um, infinite experiences from the different perspective and from the different uh, organisms and from different structures but but from the perspective of the organism uh, the the experiences are uh, seen as uh, limited or the senses are uh, limiting and formatting the incoming structures and uh, only limiting the uh, only al al allowing the limited uh, information to imprint in the memory therefore um, only a slice of experiences are experienced through the body mind uh, structures uh, however uh, the experiencer is getting such experiences uh, through unlimited uh, structures uh, in the existence uh, therefore um, yeah that's that would be my answer was number seven memory creates various experiences but what creates memory uh, no uh, this is a wrong statement that memory creates various experiences uh, no uh, it is wrong because the experiences are actually non-causal and it is processless nothing causes the experiences experiences are there and it is fundamental and uh, however memory is uh, just a model that is created uh, by the wise people to explain the working of the illusion and uh, it is very useful tool uh, to understand the illusion and it is uh, very logical and and it is very useful for predicting the outcomes and a uh, very useful tool but uh, it is uh, not creating the experiences it is just a model and uh, and uh, as per the model uh, if we uh, try to explain the memory uh, there is uh, there is the uh, binary change there is the vibration uh, in the universal memory and the vibrations get uh, self organized uh, and uh, form the pattern and the pattern forms the experiences uh, sorry forms the memory which which are stable and uh, which uh, have a capacity to store the other patterns that is how the memory is created question number eight what do senses so well uh, senses are the vibrating structure uh, in the memory and uh, which are responsible for uh, uh, limiting and formatting the incoming vibrations and uh, uh, provide uh, and and senses are very useful for providing the meaningful experiences and uh, which are very useful for the survival of the organism and uh, essentially the senses uh, therefore it can be said that uh, senses uh, are uh, are uh, have a very crucial uh, role uh, in the perception and actually senses senses only show the 
that which is not out there uh, it only shows the false reality uh, that is what the senses so question number nine why is illusion necessary well um, i think this question is not uh, a valid question for a, a illusion because illusion is just there uh, there is no any reason for illusion it is uh, non-causal nothing causes the illusion and uh, and we cannot uh, say um, find any necessity of the illusion it is without any reason and uh, illusion is almost uh, as good as not being there actually it is very illusory and uh, fundamentally it is just a potential in the existence uh, question number 10 which state is the best state to be in well uh, state is also the experience which is uh, stable or semi-stable and uh, where there is domination of uh, certain activity and all the states are uh, the state of the, the memory uh, so um, so they are uh, pretty illusory and uh, but from the perspective of the knowledge uh, or the or the duality uh, the best state would be uh, the concentrated aware and the equanimous state because those states are very um, uh, useful uh, for obtaining the knowledge and uh, these states are uh, are very uh, uh, peaceful states i would like to come to some uh, five if the experiencer is emptiness how can it pervade in every creature well uh, experiencer is uh, uh, emptiness uh, because there is no any substance in the experiencer however it is a uh, witnessing all the experiences uh, including all the creature and uh, experiencer or the emptiness is the background on which uh, all the illusory experiences uh, all the illusory uh, creature appear and disappear and uh, uh, therefore uh, we can say that it pervades in every creature and uh, we cannot find uh, the experiencer without experiences and we cannot find the experiences without experiencer therefore uh, uh, the fundamental um, uh, the true nature of the experiences also comes out to be the experiencer and uh, fundamentally the experiencer and the experiences are one and only the pure non-dual existence i think uh, that would be my answer guruji uh, thank you all for listening okay thank you very good attempt by Suraj. You get 7.5 out of 10, which is a very good score. Your knowledge is very good. And that means you are passed. Now you are, you will be placed in step number four. Yes. So you can progress forward you can do the experiments and you will need to send me weekly reports. Just one line, two line reports about the experiments, the practice and focus more on the waking state practice because we have three months in the program so best to utilize this time for waking state then rest of the life you can explore other states so we are going to discuss the questions a little bit because his answers were very detailed already a lot of detail was given so i don't need to explain everything now i'll just explain it in few sentences then we'll do our regular meeting. So the first question was, what are the basic requirements for gaining knowledge? And his answer was correct. Um, basic requirements means, uh, first, you must have qualities of the seeker. Without the qualities, no knowledge is possible. Second, guru is required. Without the guru, no knowledge is possible. Third, means of knowledge is required. Valid means and criteria for truth and all these tools are required there are many more things that people can add you know like books or good communication and time and a little bit of detachment from the world family and so on that not they are not very strict requirements we put them under the qualities of the student Number two, if truth is one and never changes, how can it be subjective and arbitrary? So again, the answer was very good. It was a satisfactory answer that yes, it is subjective and arbitrary and whatever criteria we use is also subjective. We decided that this will be the criteria. But what we have done on the path of knowledge, we have chosen the ultimate criteria. That means the one which is 
which gives us true truth in all possible situations all contexts that criteria is everything that changes is false so because of this criteria we could reach something which is ultimate and just like he said it is flexible if you don't want ultimate truth then use any other criteria which helps in your life so you can already see people believe different things what is true what is false but yes if you want to reach the final then your criteria will be so strong so strict that uh, it will be impossible to miss the truth for us it is necessary to know the truth because we are seekers of the truth so we choose a criteria which is which gives us the final there cannot be any more stronger criteria than this one and then there cannot be any higher truth than the one we know so that is why that is how we justify this criteria because you can choose it any criteria you can choose when then any intelligent person will justify it why it was chosen number 3 why is existence regarded as whole and complete so his answer was good he got half marks because uh, yes the answer is very simple that uh, you cannot remove anything from the existence and you cannot add anything in the existence and that is why it is whole and complete one line answer or you can say it is whole and complete because we define the whole and complete as existence existence does not mean something else the meaning of the existence is whole and complete that which is whole and complete will be called existence so it is by definition and the third thing you can say it is necessary that it will be whole and complete by logic you can say like this that it is necessary that the existence is whole and complete why let us say you remove some part of the existence now it becomes not whole it becomes a part partial existence but where are you going to put that part which you remove is there a different second existence existence number 2 and if you can reach that place that means it is already connected and it is one same way if you add something in the existence from where are you going to bring that thing to add into it, this existence there cannot be a separate existence for specially made for that other thing which you are adding it's impossible so it is necessary that the existence will be whole and complete it is not that it is arbitrary it is not our wish that we want the existence to be whole and complete it's not possible isn't it it is required it is necessary that it will be whole and complete there is no other possibility there is no possibility of it being not complete not whole this completeness is also called beauty the completeness is also called perfection so existence is perfect and beautiful and i am that existence so i am perfect and not this person this person cannot be called perfect in any way existence is perfect which i am really number 4 what causes witnessing ability in the existence so again his answer was correct but some issues were there in the answer so i gave only half marks the answer is again one line that uh, it the witnessing is not an ability which i think suraj said that uh, existence is the witness but there is a problem in the question that uh, we are and the question is saying that witnessing ability what causes it so there are many problems in the question so witnessing is not an ability of the existence existence is the witness there is no other existence which is without this ability it is not that there is an existence and some somehow it gets this ability of witnessing this is not like this there is witness that is the existence they are not separate so what causes if you are that then there is no question of causing it so the answer was simple the question is a problem the question is complicated because there are so many assumptions in the question so anyhow number 5 existence is empty experience is emptiness how can it pervade in every creature so correct answer and i agree with that answer it can be said more accurately because then the question is asking the reason for pervasiveness of experience in every creature so what this question is saying is that if it is emptiness how can you fill every creature with this experiencer so the person is assuming that if experiencer is something you can put it in every creature but you told me it is emptiness now how can you put it in every creature you see there is a lot of ignorance in the person who is asking this question so suraj was correct yes because every creature is appearing on the background of experiencer that is the meaning of all pervading it is not that experiencer is something <laughs> which is 
found in all the creatures no, no. The creatures are fa- found in this wholeness which is experiencer so i think it, the answer should be complete here there is nothing more to explain and why why emptiness is this background because if it were something else than emptiness then it would be something finite and then it won't be able to pervade every creature only emptiness has this possibility of occupying everything this is again logical thing i know it, it's not so meaningful to say this like this but you can assume the opposite and see that it is meaningless if it is not emptiness then how can you put it in everywhere because you will be exhausted that thing will be exhausted there cannot be infinite quantity of something but there can be infinite emptiness because there is nothing so although <laughs> these things are beyond our intellect but somehow we can cross question and show that uh, the assumptions are wrong and number 6 if experiences are infinite why is the experiencer getting a limited experience and uh, suraj tried uh, his uh, try was very good but the answer was not satisfactory so uh, he did not get any marks here in the number 6 all the answer was very long and detailed but the main point was missed that uh, the uh, the question is saying that experience is getting limited experiences and suraj said yes that is right but no that is not right who is getting all the experiences experiencer only there is nobody else there is nothing else which is getting the other experiences if there are infinite experiences that means and there is only one thing which can get them then it is necessary that it will get all the infinite experiences very simple so he said yes it is correct that the experiences are infinite yes and that is correct but the experiencer is also infinite because it can witness anything why it is infinite why both are infinite because it is existence which is simply another name of infinite potential existence is the name of infinite potential see how simple it is number 7 memory creates various experiences but what creates memory full marks even though the question was tricky could not trick suraj he said no it is wrong memory does not create experience yes experiences are already there they are fundamental and the explanation of the experiences is memory now the second part is in the domain of science not in philosophy that what creates memory you see, you see if it is not there if it is simply theory then there should not be any question of its creation but since it is assumed that there is memory we assume what creates memory and the answer is vibration memory is uh, semi stable vibration this is the definition of memory it appears to be stabilized somehow so vibration creates memory but you know these are explanations this is not the truth so i gave him full mark because you need to know the truth not the mechanisms number 8 what do senses show full marks again because he said something but in the end he said the right answer which is that they show the illusion only yes senses do not show us any truth they only create the help to create a good illusion you can say beautiful illusion without senses there will be simply randomness of experiences so they do not show any truth but they show that which is required for survival you can add to the answer if anybody wants more information what do they show only that which is needed for survival it can be true it can be false it can be anything the senses are made for only one purpose to keep us alive this organism alive number 9 why is illusion necessary this is very tricky question and he got half marks 0.5 so he said no it is not necessary it is fundamental and so on something like this so there is a assumption in the question that uh, you are saying that it is all illusion all the experience is illusion then why do we have it why why is, is it required why can't we simply throw it away is it really necessary to have the illusion and the ignorance is that it can go away this is the ignorance the illusion just like the witness of the illusion does not go away even after knowing that it is illusion it remains why because it is me only where will i go is me necessary or not is meaningless question isn't it i simply exist you can talk about the necessity or uh, unnecessity of objects events bodies creatures whatever but uh, the most fundamental is the simply is and that is appearing as illusion before itself there is no need of asking for necessities here meaningless so anyway his attempt was very good so he got 5.5 number 10 which state is the best state to be in again full marks 
but uh, to be clear i just want to add into it make it very very clear that uh, before knowledge whatever surat said is the best state the concentrated state the aware state the the rational mind so on logical mind clear mind pure mind whatever you want to call it this is the best state to get the knowledge without this kind of state there won't be any knowledge or even if i tell you it you it will be forgotten because impurities and the states are fluctuating so they, they are needed the good states are needed but after knowledge what do we need which is the best state after knowledge and the answer is very simple all are good perfection only you have seen the perfection of it and you know there is only one state actually which is the state of oneness i am that oneness all these other states our mental states they happen in the background of oneness so usually in the scriptures it is called the fourth state waking dreaming sleeping three and they say that the final state is the fourth which is be witnessing all the states coming and going and and none of these are good none of these are bad in the absolute sense but uh, seekers can prefer their own states once you taste the higher states you won't like the lower that is guaranteed so the seekers are found in higher states most of the time people think that after knowledge these states are obtained these states are preferred but no 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 it's not required all states are my own states and they happen as and when needed and actually so if you are in ignorance there is some importance of being in some kind of state but uh, after knowledge it is all your play whatever you want will be your state so these are answers short answers to the questions according to me and uh, suraj gave very good answers very good knowledge you will progress a lot of potential continue the practice so if anybody has any other questions they can ask now we have some time left kanika is asking a separate mind exists for each state like an awakening sleep i think you are asking something in tantra bodhi probably this this one only so by separate mind probably you think uh, the whole mind body complex which we are witnessing in the waking state probably some other kind exists in some other state i think this is what you are asking and the answer is yes there is a separate mind in dreaming there is a separate individual in dreaming there is a separate mind in the projected states separate mind in the death state and here the mind is used in a tantric way not from the path of knowledge point of view from the path of knowledge point of view only one mind everywhere which is universal mind but it appears like this that when the state changes there are changes in the form that the memory takes and probably that is why the states are different if your state change from waking to dreaming and if your form and your experience and your memory remain the same then how will you come to know that it is dreaming it is dreaming state and this must be your own direct experience that your personality is slightly different in the dreaming state and those who are doing the projected state experiments they will see that uh, there is something some different creature in the projected states mostly the fear is absent mostly the confidence is so high there because ultimate freedom is there and there is probably different kind of creature after death but what are these they are same actually but they are appearing as different because the states are different actually in sanskrit we have different names for uh, different uh, creatures that appear in different states now i forgot can somebody tell me there are different names for different kind of states where i am this in one state i am that in another state probably you can search for that in some of the one of the upanishad that is written what happens that without awareness those who do not have knowledge their awareness is zero and this individual appears different in different states not only that this individual will up become different in different births the last birth which you can say is my birth we are in the domain of tantra now we are domain of occult maya you can say like this that i was born as this and this person last time and you can see that it was completely different that personality that person was different next birth will be a different person although there is connecting link between the two which is called the causal body that is the same but it takes different forms so obviously when the state changes the mind of ignorant person will take different personalities different forms and in every dream it takes different forms that is also mentioned in scriptures and this 
Waking state is also a dream. And here also it takes different forms, which is obvious. This is what is happening. This is not completely theoretical. This is based on observation. So when your state changes, expect some changes. Personality, individuality, and your likes, dislikes, desires, they can change a little bit. But what will happen as your awareness increases, this causal connection will become stronger which we call um, memory bridge. Memory bridge between different states, different states becomes stronger and stronger. Now the one state is connected to another. That means the differences will become less and less. At least you will remember I was this in waking state. And if it becomes so strong, after death you will remember who you were before death. If it becomes too strong, the same individual will be maintained in all the births which is the case of uh, the great gurus and uh, rishis and munis. They know <laughs> what they were since many births. Although it looks like a story for us because we are not advanced that much. But this is how the differences dissolve with um, greater and greater awareness, with spiritual progress, evolution, spiritual evolution. And ultimately you become like a big mind which can take any form anytime simultaneously. We call it the greater mind. And we are inside that greater mind right now. That is amazing. We are small babies of that greater mind. And the baby is growing and becoming a greater mind. Very good question. Okay. Kanika is saying, when you say there is no one to dissolve in one of the videos, then awareness will come to an end too. See, awareness is activity of the mind. And uh, dissolved mind has no activity. So yes, there is no need of awareness. When you become that, of which you are aware, of which you are trying to be aware, then there is no need of this activity of mind. So the, the thing is, the reality is, you are already that, you are already ultimate, you are already dissolved. So the awareness is already ended, means it is simply play now, which is a result of ignorance. If you accept this completely, that you are the whole, then do you need awareness? No. It becomes like a nature, second nature. You can say first nature also. There is no need to remain aware what I am. I am what I am. So why is awareness prescribed, given? Because you forget what you are. You forget that I am already dissolved. I am the whole. So the sooner you end this requirement of being aware, better it is. Faster progress. There is nobody to, to be dissolved. All are my forms, dissolved or undissolved. They are all empty. So then what is the need of awareness? No need. But since there is some remaining illusion in the mind, you must do the awareness practice. It is That's why we kept it optional. If you don't want to do it, you are happy being in the whole existence. I am Brahman, end of the story. Then you don't need awareness practice. The problem is most of the seekers are not happy being, <laughs> being the ultimate. So we try to keep them engaged in some kind of practice. Personally, I don't do any practice. I realized the uselessness of all the practices. So I'm happy now. And if you realize this, you can also become happy without doing any practice, without doing anything at all. Enjoy. You are Brahman now, what's there? So like the baby knows that I can walk. The baby can see the adults are walking. The baby knows I can walk. But it, it takes some time for the baby to learn walking, running. Once they start walking, this they immediately start running. They don't even walk. Directly they run. You must have seen babies. Very much energetic. Same way. You know that you are the whole. But you need to walk to that. Little bit. You need to learn a little bit. To remain as whole. Whole means existence Brahman. So it is just like babies learning to walk. You are given the awareness practice. The quickly you learn it. Better it is. Drop it. Don't need any. Do you want to keep learning how to walk for the rest of your life? And when will you live your life? Spend a few years. Like the babies, they, they take one or one year or two years to walk properly. Spend one or two years in the program, <laughs> in awareness practice and enjoy the rest of your life. Actually, I want you, your awareness practice and all this drama to end. Still, we prescribe it. What to do? Because if I, if I don't prescribe it, you will forget it. Tomorrow, you'll forget the whole knowledge. So I think there are no more questions and time is over. But you can always ask your questions in the next meeting. And uh, we'll end today's meeting here.